why is it so little? Why do you get paid such little money as an au pair? Hey y'all, it's Graham with Au Pair World, and in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all about pocket money. Before I jump into this video, if you haven't already, please like it, subscribe to Au Pair World, and leave us a comment down below so we can know what you're thinking. Thank you so much for your support, and that being said, let's jump right into this video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking a lot about money, specifically pocket money. What us au pairs make as pocket money, what it is, and how you can save it. So I'm gonna divide today's video into two parts. The first part is going to be explaining exactly what is pocket money, everything that you should know about it, your contract, all that good stuff. And the second part is going to be how you can make the most of your pocket money, how you can save it, how you can make it go the furthest way. One of the number one themes that I get asked about over on my YouTube channel and my Instagram is pocket money. What is it? How much do you make? Why do you make the amount you make? How do you negotiate it? All of those things. And so in today's video, I'm going to be explaining all of that, breaking it down for you guys so you can know everything you need to know before you sign a contract. So first things first, what is pocket money? Simply put, pocket money is the amount of money that your host family is going to pay you as an au pair. This is not a set amount of money. There's no one rule for how much this has to be. And the amount that you get paid really just varies depending on the country you're staying in and the family you're with. Generally, au pairs inside of the European Union are going to get paid somewhere between 70 and 120 euros a week. Cheaper countries like Spain and Italy are generally going to pay you less money. So most au pairs that I know get paid somewhere between 50 and 70 euros a week. Au pairs in more expensive countries like France or Austria are typically going to be paid more money. For example, a lot of au pairs in Paris start out their pocket money at 100 euros a week, which sounds a lot, but you have to keep in mind that Paris is a really expensive city. But I'm jumping ahead of myself. I'll talk more about that in a second. So what you're probably wondering what I wondered was, why is it so little? Why do you get paid such little money as an au pair? And I'm gonna break it down for you. There's a couple reasons why au pairs are generally not paid much pocket money. The first of which is au pairing is a cultural exchange, not just a job. This is an answer that I generally don't like to give because trust me, when you are with the kids for a seven hour day or an eight hour day and you're exhausted, you will think it's a job. But that's not all the au pairing is. It really is a cultural exchange. You are taking your culture to their home and they are giving you their culture and their language. So generally the families that you're staying with are not just looking for a nanny because if they were, they would get a nanny. They're looking for someone who can share their culture with them and vice versa. The second reason you're not going to make loads of money as an au pair is because you're paid in other ways. What I mean when I say this is au pairs aren't just paid pocket money. Think about this, we get free room, free board. Oftentimes the family pays for transportation, insurance, language school. When you add all of these things up, au pairs are really doing pretty well. Just out of curiosity, I did some number crunching before I made this video to see about how much I earn on a weekly basis when you add in all of those factors. All this information is based in Seville, Spain where I'm an au pair, so of course if you're in, say, Paris or Vienna, it's probably going to be a lot more expensive. But in my research, I found that for one room in someone's house, a private room with a private bathroom, is gonna cost around 500 euros a month. I tagged on an extra 200 euros a month for food, 40 euros for transportation, another 40 euros for insurance, and a couple other little fees here and there that my host family covers. When you add all of those with the pocket money that I make, I make around 250 euros a week, which is not bad at all. But of course, on the surface, it looks like I just make 70. So the big takeaway here is just because it looks like you're not being paid much doesn't mean that you're actually not being paid much. You are living in a foreign country with a family for free. They are paying for your food. They are paying for other things. And when you add all those things up, you're getting paid quite well. And remember, just because they're paying you more doesn't mean you're going to make more. 70 euros in Seville is going to go way, way further than 70 euros in 
Paris. So keep that in mind that I can do more with my 70 here than my au pair friends in Paris can do with their 100 or their 120. So do wash that around in your head as you're looking for host families. The last thing I'll say here is before you sign a contract, clear up with your family who is paying for what. Make sure that you know and they know exactly what they're going to be paying for. For example, do you want them to pay for your insurance? What about transportation? Who's going to be paying for food? Who's paying for language school? All of these things are questions that you need to ask your host family so y'all are on the same page before you ever go. Okay, so now we've made it to the second part of the video and this is the part where I tell you how to make the most out of your pocket money. The first suggestion I have is don't come with empty pockets or come with some money saved up. The entire point of your stay as an au pair, whether it be for a month or whether it be for two years, is to explore your host country, to have new experiences, to see new things, to go places you've never been. And if you come to your host country with no money saved up, no money in your pocket, then you're not gonna have any money to travel around or do things because generally you're only paid on a weekly basis with your pocket money. So one big suggestion I have is that you come to your host country with at least enough money to buy a return ticket home. This is A, going to give you an insurance plan just in case things don't go well, but it's also going to give you some money to enjoy, to see your host country, to explore your city. The next suggestion I have is to don't spend it all at once. Set a limit for yourself. One of the biggest mistakes that I see au pairs and Erasmus students making is when they go to their host country, they just spend every penny they have in their first month, and then after that, they really can't do much because they don't have any more money. So the big suggestion I have for you here is don't do that. Don't spend all of your money up front. Budget your money and think about how you want to spend it over your stay. The best way to do this is to set a weekly limit for yourself. Here's what I've always done that's worked very well. My rule is that when I get paid my pocket money, I save 40 euros and then I give myself 30 to spend every week. I know 30 euros doesn't sound like much, but if you use it wisely, which I'm about to tell you how to do, you can really make 30 euros go a long way. Also, when you're saving that money, you can save it for trips later on, you can save it for your travel back home, or any other expense that might come up over your au pair stay. I strongly, strongly advise you not to spend all of your money at once because if something does come up, a last minute trip or an emergency where you have to go home, you might find yourself in a tough situation. So do be saving up some money, save up some of that pocket money, and don't spend it all at once. The next big suggestion I have is to do free things. This point is way underrated in the au pair community, but as an au pair, as an Erasmus student, you're not going to have much money, so you need to be looking for free things that you can do that are fun, that are going to occupy your time, and that are going to make the most of the experience. One of my favorite things to do with my au pair friends is take a picnic to the park where we all pack our own food. I always bring mine from home to save money, or as we say in Spanish, un bocadillo, or just bring things from home that aren't quite so expensive. This saves money because, of course, you're not buying food out, but parks are free, so you're literally getting free time with your friends in nature outside, and it's just a really nice way to pass an evening. Also, look for discounts at museums and or other cultural activities. This is a fantastic way to get to know your host country and your host culture, because in Europe, a lot of museums and or government entities will give either discounts or let au pairs in for free. So be sure to check all of those out and take full advantage of that. The next suggestion I have for you is to avoid tourist traps. This really doesn't apply to you if you're living in a really small city or a city without much tourism, but the two cities that I've lived in, Seville and Madrid, are huge tourist cities in Spain and there are loads of traps that are going to suck your money just like that. The big thing here is it's okay to do some touristy things. It's okay to do some sightseeing tours or some things like that when you get there, but don't let it become a habit because those are generally very expensive. It's gonna cost a lot of money. And try to avoid doing the things that the tourists who have a lot more money would generally do. One thing that I really love to do that is super culturally rich is I like to go on Airbnb. They have Airbnb experiences is what they're called. You could do a wine tasting or a cheese tour or a historical walk, any of those things, and they're really generally pretty cheap. These are great ways to get to know your city, to get to know your culture, and to make friends nearby. I highly suggest doing these. They're so fun and generally pretty affordable. The next suggestion I have is to use public transit. 
If you're from the US like me, the idea of public transit is a little bit far-fetched because we don't use it a lot here. We don't really have it. We drive everywhere. The cities are huge. But in Europe, public transit is extremely useful. It's easy to use, it's inexpensive, and it is an au pair's lifesaver. Be sure to talk with your host family about public transit in the city and who's going to pay for that public transit. But generally, you can get some pretty cheap public transit passes for students that will get you all around your host city and or the surrounding area. And really, really utilize this. Take full advantage of it because taking taxis, taking Ubers can get really expensive really fast. So for little small trips, walk or take a bike. And then for longer trips across the city, try to use public transit versus getting a taxi or something of that nature. The last tip I have for you is to eat at home. <laughs> Again, this one is really underrated for au pairs, but eating out can get really expensive when you're doing it a lot. Just take my 30 euros in mind. I do let myself spend 30 euros a week, but 30 euros, if I was eating out, I could spend 30 euros in two or three meals. So avoid eating out. I like to give myself one meal out a week or split the bill with your friends. A good idea is to set yourself a restaurant or a coffee limit or let that be kind of a special treat. So my rule is every day I can buy a coffee or something cheap like that and I like to spend less than three euros a day on food and or drinks. In Spain, that's really easy to do as coffee and pastries are very cheap and generally restaurants are on the cheaper end as well, but avoid eating out all the time. It's expensive and it's really not healthy. Learn how to cook. It's a great chance to cook. It's a great chance to eat at home and your host family is paying for the groceries. So eating at home is free. Okay guys, so this wraps up the video on pocket money, on what you need to know about it and how to save it. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to like it, subscribe to Au Pair World and leave us a comment down below letting us know what you think. Thank you so, so much for watching. We very much appreciate your support and we look forward to seeing you next time. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Y hasta luego. Bye-bye.